Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, the main objective of this session uh, is to discuss the factors that shift the LM schedule. Uh, the two factors that shift the LM schedule are one is changes uh, in the exogenously fixed money supply and the second factor is shift in the money demand function. So, let us discuss one by one. Coming to the first part that is the changes in the exogenously fixed money supply as you are already aware that means the money supply is assumed to be a policy variable and when we consider an increase in money supply for example, uh, we mean a policy action uh, setting this policy instrument at a uh, new level. So, from this uh, diagram uh, what you can see that the money supply curve initial money supply curve is M naught S that is the initial money supply curve and at this stage the money demand um, money demand quantity money demanded is this much uh, at point that means point A is the equilibrium given money demand curve uh, Y naught right M D at a when the level of income is uh, Y naught and you can see that the rate of interest is uh, R naught uh, at this position. So, what is going to happen when uh, the money supply increases? When the money supply increases, uh, you can see that the money supply curve shift to right uh, that means a M S 1 that is the new money supply curve. So, then as a result you can also see that other things remaining constant that means we assumed here that the level of income remaining same that means uh, Y naught uh, income that Y naught remain uh, same. So, that at this position uh, when uh, money supply increases uh, then the rate of interest decreases that means the rate of interest become R1 rate of interest falls to uh, R1 from R0 right the rate of interest uh, decreases here. So, the mechanism behind uh, why rate of interest decrease uh, you know that actually when money supply increase uh, give for the given level of income uh, people are having more money now people are content with more money and then since assuming that there are only two assets that means a bond and money uh, where uh, uh, money uh, do not pay re interest and whereas uh, bond pay uh, interest income as well as capital gain or capital loss. So, as a result when the money supply increases uh, given for the given level of income uh, people are having more money means that means they will demand more bond. So, in the bond market the demand for bond increase and as a result the price of bond uh, increases price of bond uh, increases price of bond increases means the um, uh, inverse relationship between bond price and the rate of interest uh, the you can see that the rate of interest decrease. So, the, that you can see that uh, in this diagram the rate of interest falls from uh, R naught to R 1. So, this is for a given level of income. Uh, now, when we want to uh, plot uh, a LM curve uh, at this position uh, because our income level is same uh, when the given level of income what will be the new rate of interest. So, the new rate of interest we can see that it already fall from uh, R naught to R 1. So, when money supply increases the important point here is that when the money supply increases for the given level of income then the LM curve will be shifting rightwards money curve, that means upward it will be shifting uh, rightwards to the down. So, as a re, uh, result you can see that rate of interest for the same given level of income equilibrium is possible only uh, at this position that means at the uh, point B right when the point B at this position only uh, equilibrium uh, is possible uh, the rate of interest must decline um, and the new equilibrium point will be 
uh, here. So that means that is possible not at the initial LM curve. So the initial LM curve when the here when the rate of interest was R naught uh, when the money supply was M naught yes when the money supply was M naught yes uh, you can say that LM zero LM naught is the initial LM curve. Now LM curve will be uh, shifting uh, down. It will be shifting. Money supply increases. The LM curve, LM schedule will shift down. If the money supply decreases, then you can see that the LM curve will be schedule will be shifting up. This also possible when the money supply is reduced. Uh, but let us now discuss only when the money supply is increase in this scenario. So an increase in money supply from M0 to uh, M0 YS to M0 M1 S uh, can be seen here that means reducing the uh, equilibrium rate or interest rate to R1 uh, for a given level of income. So since the income is fixed uh, for the new uh, higher money supply to be equal to the money demand, the interest rate must be lower to increase the speculative demand for money and transaction demand for money for a given level of income. So in general, uh, what we can see here is that with a higher money supply uh, for a given level of income, the interest rate that equilibrates uh, money market will be lower. So the new uh, LM schedule that we can see here uh, will lie below the initial LM schedule of LM naught. It will just lie below this one. So, it will be uh, shifting uh, down. It will be shifting down uh, rightwards. Alternatively, uh, consider uh, the point on the new LM schedule that gives the equilibrium level of income uh, corresponding to, for example, this point itself. So, you can also look at here. Uh, for the suppose if the initial uh, rate of interest has to be kept there that means R naught uh, has to be retained uh, in this case um, considering that that means uh, given the gives the equilibrium level of income corresponding to interest R naught uh, in this case if you want to retain the initial rate of interest the income must increase right. So, you can see that uh, the this can be the new equilibrium position uh, the, that we can see that if the rate of interest has to be same or not then this is possible the money market equilibrium is possible only at a, a higher level of income that is y1. So, there are two interpretation here uh, in order to ensure uh, money market equilibrium uh, when the uh, money supply has increased. So, if the income remaining same then the rate of interest has to uh, has to reduce uh, from R0 to R1 for uh, money market equilibrium where money demand is equal to money supply. Uh, uh, in contrast, if the rate of interest uh, need to be uh, constant, it should not be changed, then my equilibrium is possible only because the money supply has already increased. Uh, equilibrium is only possible only if uh, income is increased from uh, Y0 to uh, Y1. So, in sum, uh, an increase in money supply, what we can see from this diagram is that uh, an increase in the money supply shift the LM schedule downward and to the right. So, uh, similarly, uh, if there is a decrease in money supply, suppose money supply decreases like this, uh, what is suppose uh, M2, yes. So, in this case, rate of interest will increase. Um, the, so, all the whatever the point that we discussed now you can apply this way the, the, the in this context as well that means money supply increase the, sorry money supply decrease people are having less money and then uh, their demand for bond declines so the demand for bond decline that means bond price uh, decline and as a result rate of interest decrease right so this is going to be the new rate of interest so accordingly uh, we can draw the new lm schedule like this this is uh, lm2 LM2 is this one. So, now let us now discuss another factor that is called change in the uh, demand function, uh, dem demand for money function, shifts in the money demand function. So, in the uh, what we have considered so far, the shift in the money demand schedule drawn against the interest rate as the level of income changes, uh, but this is not what we meant here by a shift in the money demand function. A shift in the money demand function means a change in the amount of money demanded for a given level of interest rate and income. So, what Keynes call uh, is a shift in the uh, liquidity preference. So, uh, for example, the liquidity preference the changes or shift in the money demand function happen. For example, 
due to changes in business conditions or fear of war uh, look at all these factors changes in uh, business conditions suppose that the uh, business conditions become very pessimistic very uh, dark future ahead for example in the economic scenario uh, future uh, be, uh, pessimistic business conditions fear of war or possible bank failures or uh, financial crisis and as a result you know that all because of all these things uh, the overall riskiness in the economy increases the uncertainty level increases so people will be making less investment in uh, bond market and stock market so that you can see here is that there will be low demand for bonds uh, because of the adverse business condition and fear of war etc there will be low demand for investment in bond market and security market and that means as a result people will be demanding uh, more money right so due to this adverse uh, business condition the liquidity preference increases that means people are demanding more money uh, when they demand more money this situation uh, would be a shift in individuals portfolios away from bonds and toward money for a given level of uh, interest rate income so in this case how does it look like so here uh, assume that this is the given money supply given money supply and the income is y not and now at the same income level assuming the same that y not uh, here also assume uh, same uh, y not same level of income uh, now we assume that um, uh, there is adverse business conditions whatever we discussed so far just now uh, as a result people will be demanding more money so the new money demand curve from m0 to md if shifted to rightward this is the new money demand curve that means m1d right so now people are demanding at the same rate of interest uh, they are demanding uh, more money now so what does it mean uh, they are demanding more money that means there is a shift in the money demand function so that means the liquidity preference has increased that means a demand for liquidity preference has increased as a result so you can see that uh, this is the new diagram uh, the new money demand curve so you can say that uh, new equilibrium position so the initial uh, equilibrium position for money supply equal to money demand is at this position uh, when at the same level of income that the y note but still now people are demanding more money for transaction purpose or maybe um, they may be keeping it for speculative purpose speculative demand as well uh, this is the new equilibrium position new money demand curve is this at the same given level of income uh, you can see that uh, the rate of interest increase right because at the new equilibrium position uh, money supply is equal to money demand at this curve uh, at this position rate of interest is uh, r1 so because of this shift in uh, money demand function the lm schedule because the level of income is same we are not changing the level of income uh, this is the initial equilibrium position now as a result uh, when the liquidity uh, preference uh, has increased the new lm schedule is going to be lm1 from lm lm0 the lm curve uh, shift to the shift upwards uh, and this is going to be the new lm schedule so the equilibrium position is um, here that means from a uh, new equilibrium position is the b where you can see that the uh, income remaining constant at the same level of income money market market will be in equilibrium uh, not at the not at the point of a anymore uh, because increase uh, in the money demand function or a liquidity preference a uh, new equilibrium position is going to be uh, b that means uh, people are now demanding more and more money so as a result uh, the rate of interest will uh, increase a rate of interest must increase so that that will discourage them to reduce their money demand uh, so that money supply is equal to uh, money demand that means money demand is restored with the initial uh, money demand that means before the change in this liquidity preference so that means in order to do that the rate of interest must uh, increase so at the given level of income this is going to be the new equilibrium uh, position so that means you can see that for the for a given level of income why not uh, will be above the uh, the new lm curve that is lm1 uh, will be for a given level of income uh, it will be above the old lm schedule of lm not 
So another option also you can see that this is one option that the rate of interest must increase. Uh, similarly, maintaining equilibrium uh, in the money market at R naught. What if we want to keep this R naught uh, constant? There is no change in uh, rate of interest. So maintaining equilibrium uh, in the money market at R naught after the shift in the money demand schedule uh, would require a fall in income. You can see that uh, the curve if you look at the horizontal way, uh, axis. Uh, horizontal direction uh, leftwards you can see that to maintain equilibrium uh, in the money market at a R naught rate of interest uh, require a fall in income to a level below the Y naught below the Y naught. So suppose here uh, we can say that we need to say that uh, income level uh, Y1 Y1 suppose then where we assume Y1 is less than uh, Y1 is less than uh, Y naught. So which would shift the LM with the schedule figure. Uh, to the left left of the uh, LM naught. This point on LM1 at the R1 uh, is to the left of the LM naught. So, this is shown at the uh, point C uh, in this diagram. So, here um, a shift in the money demand function that increases the demand for money at a given level of both interest rate and income shift the LM schedule upward and to the left and a reverse change in money demand that means uh, decrease in the money demand function or decrease in the liquidity preference uh, that means lowering the amount of money demanded at a given level of income and interest rate uh, shift the LM schedule downward to the right. That means uh, if um, there is decrease uh, in the money demand function uh, that means the decrease in the liquidity preference. Uh, then in this case uh, LN curve would LN curve would shift uh, downward to the right. So this is possible uh, the demand the liquidity preference will come down uh, if the business conditions are very optimistic and very bright and there is completely certainty and people are having more trust on the financial institutions and people uh, instead of demanding more money they will be investing in bond market and stock market that means uh, demand for money decline. So in this case equilibrium is possible uh, in, this, in this way this position and this position same level of income uh, rate of interest will decline rate of interest will decline to this position. Uh, if uh, same interest rate has to be restored then income has to be increased. Uh, this is going to be the uh, new income uh, that means this is uh, A, B, C, D, uh, E. So when the uh, money demand function shift to the, the, the demand function or the liquidity preference declines, LN curve shift to uh, downward to the right and new equilibrium position is E if we want to retain, keep the initial rate of interest R0 then the income must increase. Uh, so if income must be kept at the same position that the Y0 uh, then the rate of interest must uh, decline to uh, R2 from R0. So let us summarize what we have discussed so far uh, in the LM schedule. The key summary points here, uh, LM schedule is the schedule giving the combination of values of income and interest rate that produce equilibrium in the money market and the schedule slopes upward to the right. Uh, LM schedule will be relatively flat if the interest elasticity of money demand is relatively high and LM schedule will shift downward to the right. Uh, with an increase in the quantity of money. So similarly, LM schedule will shift upward uh, to the left uh, with a shift in the money demand function uh, that increases the amount of money demanded at a given levels of income and interest rate. Uh, Let us now uh, kind of discuss the IS schedule. IS schedule means the product market equilibrium. So in this section, uh, in this uh, part uh, while discussing IS schedule, we are going to see what are the necessary conditions so that uh, the product market is in equilibrium. We are going to derive the necessary the conditions that make a uh, product market is in equilibrium. So we will identify what are the components of product market, uh, what is IES, uh, uh, what makes uh, that a IS uh, that the product market in equilibrium. So the main objective here uh, is to finding uh, the set 
of interest rate and income combination uh, that produces equilibrium for the product market. And subsequently, we will examine the factors that determine the slope of the IS curve. Uh, in addition, uh, we also discuss uh, the factors that determine the slope, the position of the uh, IS curve. That means the factors that determine the shifting of the IS curve. So, coming to the first part, uh, let us make a quick overview of the uh, basic, the simple Keynesian model uh, that will help us to discuss uh, discuss uh, the IS curve. Um, so, in the simple Keynesian model, uh, in a closed economy. Uh, we make that the aggregate demand, uh, aggregate demand that means Y that is aggregate demand, aggregate demand is equal to consumption plus uh, investment plus uh, government expenditure. So, consumption means the expenditure on goods and services by households, uh, investment means uh, expenditure on capital goods by firms, G means government expenditure that is the uh, government expenditure uh, in the economy. So, that is the aggregate demand. So, for the macroeconomic equilibrium, one of the, the main conditions of macroeconomic equilibrium is uh, aggregate supply is equal to aggregate demand. So, aggregate output must equal to aggregate demand or desired aggregate expenditure. Uh, the way aggregate demand also we mean a desired aggregate expenditure uh, should be equal to the aggregate supply. So, here uh, Y D A D that means uh, aggregate demand let us denote it with the capital letter Y and A D that means uh, aggregate demand that means expenditure uh, aggregate demand consists of consumption plus consumption uh, expenditure investment expenditure and government spending uh, that means uh, Y A D is equal to aggregate expenditure uh, is equal to C plus I plus G that is equation number 2. Uh, aggregate supply looking from the supply side of the economy, we can see that aggregate supply is equal to consumption plus uh, savings plus tax. So, this is actually the way in macroeconomics the way we look uh, the supply side of the economy using this uh, identity that means aggregate supply is equal to consumption plus uh, saving plus T. So, here uh, what we can see that national product uh, the aggregate supply we can also say that uh, national product uh, is equal to factor income which in turn used for C plus S plus uh, T. Since uh, Y A S uh, is a national product uh, we can write that Y is equal to C plus I R, I R here means uh, realized investment. The because there is a desired investment, a desired investment by uh, the firms, uh, but when we want to make it equal to YAS, uh, IER we need to write uh, instead of um, I note that the desired one, uh, we need to write it as uh, the realized, the actual investment made by the firm, the business, the productive sector um, plus government expenditure. So, that means uh, we are rewriting it Y is equal to C plus I R plus G. Uh, so, in this case the total that means C plus S plus T that is aggregate supply, aggregate supply set and uh, is approximately equal to C plus I plus G this is aggregate demand. Right. So, in the macroeconomy uh, we can say that the aggregate supply equation identity is C plus consumption plus savings by all households. Uh, then the tax paid by the households to the government uh, is equal to uh, total consumption that is C plus um, I that the investment expenditure made by firms uh, and the government expenditure. So, in equilibrium Y must equal C plus I plus G uh, and Y is defined as uh, Y plus uh, C plus T where you can see that C plus C that this is cancelled out. So, finally, equivalently we can see that the necessary the condition for macroeconomic equilibrium is S plus T savings plus tax is equal to investment plus uh, government expenditure. So, the amount of income that household do not spend on output saving means that the uh, amount of income uh, that the household do not spend on output that means S plus T because the total um, uh, from the supply side total aggregate supply is equal to C plus S plus T uh, that means uh, S plus T means uh, that the 
do not spend on output do not spend on consumption that is s plus t uh, is equal to we can also rewrite it like that uh, s plus t is equal to y minus c uh, and therefore the amount of output that is produced but not sold to household is just equal to the desired purchases by uh, two other two sectors that means at equilibrium s plus t should be equal to i plus g keeping c is cancelling out from both side what we can see here is that determining the equilibrium level of income uh, that means y that the aggregate supply is equal to aggregate demand that is e uh, is equal to c plus i plus g uh, so the equilibrium income is the endogenous variable to be determined so what is the equilibrium income uh, here so the autonomous variables that means i plus g i g and t are exogenous variables determined by variables uh, the bit determined by factors outside the model all these variable that the i here initially in the simple keynesian model we consider uh, investment as an autonomous variable that is not a function of rate of interest but when we derive is model uh, we are going to decompose i into two component that is autonomous component and rate of interest determined component so initially in the simple keynesian model we say i is uh, autonomous government expenditure also autonomous that is not a function of uh, level of income or rate of interest or any other function uh, investment here also only a function of business condition uh, t means tax that is also exogenously determined that means autonomous variable uh, this is determined outside the model so consumption is for most part uh, induced expenditure determined endogenously by the consumption function Be because consumption is uh, that is uh, the um, a plus b y d uh, a means the intercept uh, that the autonomous con component uh, that means even income is zero till some consumption will be there uh, then the uh, induced component is uh, b that we can see the marginal propensity to consume b is the marginal propensity to consume uh, when income increases y d is the um, disposable income so rewriting we can write that um, c is equal to a plus b times y b means the marginal propensity to consume because the total the mpc b plus um, 1 minus b 1 minus b it should be equal to 1 1 minus b means the marginal propensity to save uh, b means marginal propensity to consume 1 minus b is marginal propensity to save uh, it should be equal to c 1 so c we can rewrite where that means a plus uh, marginal propensity times the um, income that income y um, and minus b b times uh, t b means uh, marginal propensity to consume again times uh, t so because we are rewriting y d as uh, y minus t so we can see here is that c y is equal to c plus i plus g uh, so rewriting that is c replacing c with this uh, we can rewrite it like this plus uh, i plus g then solving for equilibrium level of income uh, we can say that uh, y minus b y is equal to uh, a minus b t plus i plus g uh, then y times 1 minus b is equal to uh, a minus b t uh, plus uh, i plus g uh, finally solving it for the equilibrium level of income uh, we can resolve it like that the first part by 1 by uh, 1 minus b that is the uh, 1 by reciprocal of um, uh, 1 minus b means nothing but the marginal propensity to save the reciprocal of marginal propensity to save times uh, all these component a means uh, the intercept in the consumption function that is determined autonomous uh, not determined by income or rate of interest uh, b times t this also autonomous uh, autonomously determined tax is a government uh, determined uh, variable not a function of income or rate of interest i means uh, the autonomous uh, determined uh, autonomous uh, component of uh, investment uh, g also an autonomous component so here uh, this part is called uh, the multiplier the change in income will be multiplier times uh, all this autonomous variable all this um, autonomous variable will be coming here 
So finally, this is the uh, equilibrium condition uh, in the simple Keynesian model and based on this in the next session uh, we will continue this and see how we can derive uh, IS schedule in the ISLM framework. So the simple difference between the simple Keynesian uh, and the IS model is that in the simple Keynesian uh, we consider I as uh, autonomous variable that means it is not a function of rate of interest but in the IS schedule uh, in the next session we are going to discuss uh, investment is also uh, is one there are one component uh, autonomous component but mostly investment is a function of uh, rate of interest thank you for watching this video uh, in the next session uh, we will continue uh, this discussion thank you